This is the Kratom Science Podcast. I'm your host, Brian Gallagher, blog and social media writer for KratomScience.com, your source for all things Kratom. This week we talk about Kratom being banned in France. Mississippi State Senator Chuck Younger announces he'll introduce a bill to ban Kratom in his state. And we examine Kratom in the media over the past week. Kratom is now banned in France. This was posted on our sister site, KratomScience.eu. It's our European site. Through an official communique on January 7th, 2020, the French National Medicine Safety Agency informed that Kratom was added to the list of psychotropic substances. Under current French law, this means that the production, manufacture, transport, import, export, possession, offer, transfer, acquisition, or use of substances considered psychotropic by the agency are prohibited. In addition, the law doesn't allow any agricultural, craft, commercial, and industrial operations relating to these substances. The agency refers to several dozen alleged kratom-related deaths in the U.S. to justify their decision. Le kratom et ses composés sont désormais inscrits sur la liste des psychotropes, compte tenu des risques graves pour la santé liés à la consommation de cette plante. En conséquence, leur détention et leur achat sont maintenant interdits. Okay, this is from the ANSM, France's FDA. This is uh, their press release on January 7th announcing that Kratom is banned. Quote, Kratom and its compounds are now included in the list of psychotropic drugs, taking into account the serious health risks linked to the consumption of this plant. Consequently, their possession and purchase are now prohibited. This measure follows the results of a survey entrusted by the ANSM to the National Addictovigilance Network over the period 2007 to 2018. It reported 20 cases of kratom consumption with an increase in the number of intoxications in recent years, 14 cases since 2016, causing dependence, withdrawal syndrome, anorexia, weight loss, psychotic decompensation, and toxic hepatitis. One death has also been reported in the context of multiple drug and drug use. Unquote. So, we have pretty much the same reasoning that the FDA uses to outlaw Kratom here, or in its attempt to outlaw it here. Um, they've had one death, which was caused by multiple drug use, just like all of our deaths, uh, showing Kratom in the system, uh, also showed other drugs for the most part. That we can prove. So I don't... Okay, dependence, sure. Dependence and withdrawal. We know, a lot of creative users know that happens. Just like it does with coffee. Now, 20 cases of kratom consumption with an increase in the number of intoxications. I don't understand <clears throat> what that means. It might have got lost in translation. But intoxications might have been overdoses. Uh, 20 cases of people actually consuming it that's it that is weird i don't know if that's lost in google translate weight loss anorexia uh, have you ever heard of that one i've never heard of that weight loss is you know not so bad i don't know they're a little thinner in france psychotic decompensation that's probably a translate thing um and toxic hepatitis and, and there's no evidence for any of this, that any of this happened at all in France. I mean, no evidence is presented. I'm not saying it didn't happen, but they go on to explain what Kratom is, and we've already covered that. And if you don't know what Kratom is, go to KratomScience.com. Okay, so here we go from the ANSM. Quote, its consumption for so-called recreational purposes is also increasing worldwide, in particular in the United States where several dozen deaths have been reported by the FDA in connection with taking Kratom. End quote. Okay, we all know that's bullshit. Um, so the FDA has been going around the world trying to convince other governments to ban Kratom. They, I found, the only other thing I found that uh, just shows kind of Collusion between uh, the FDA and uh, the ANSM is a uh, some kind of confidentiality agreement that <clears throat> that the ANSM would agree not to release trade secrets that discuss between them and the FDA. Which, okay, 
but it just kind of shows that they're working together. Um, obviously, they, they cite the FDA uh, in this uh, press release that they put out on January 7th. And so, yeah, uh, they're just through no democratic process whatsoever. Uh, France has just banned Kratom. Uh, there's, there are, there was, I can't find anything in the news where there was a discussion in the public. There's nothing in the French. There's a couple French news stories that came out in response to this, but there seems to be no public discussion leading up to this within France. It, it kind of goes along with uh, they they have like the uh, neoliberal Macron stuff going on. That's what the, all the yellow vest protests are about. And but I think kratom it's just in general it's just under the radar there, so they're gonna try to nip it in the bud, and um, <clears throat> you know preemptively make uh, some of their citizenry criminals. Okay, let's read the rest of it. Quote, In view of the serious risks to public health linked to the consumption of this plant, Kratom, my tragenine and 7-hydroxymetragenine have been added to the list of psychotropic substances on the proposal of the Director General of the ANSM, order of December 23, 2019. The ANSM reminds health care professionals or patients to declare any serious case of abuse, dependence, or misuse on the on a website uh, and contact the Addicto Vigilance Center in their geographic area for any further information. End quote. The response to this so far from uh, French citizens has been 100% negative from what I could find on uh, social media. Um, there was ar- also an article in the French publication Le Monde. Well, I'll just read it to you. In recognizing... Quote, in recognizing that the consumption of Kratom in France will remain discreet, Fabrice Olivier, director of the association ASUD, Auto Support and Risk Reduction Among Drug Users, describes the decision of the Ministry of Health as desperate. Quote, at the association, we saw users of heroin and morphine tell us that this substance helped them to reduce their consumption. We think that this ban will have negative effects. It risks sending consumers of Kratom to other, more dangerous drugs. End quote. For Mr. Olivier, this inscription of the substance as psychotropic responds to political considerations rather than health. Quote, it reminds us of the ban on over-the-counter sales of codeine drugs, which was taken overnight and left many people alone with their addiction. End quote. So most of the responses have been pretty uh, similar to how the Kratom community responds to these uh, laws being passed in in the United States. However, um, they had uh, Mr. Olivier there who runs a rehabilitation center, and he was actually speaking out in favor of Kratom, which is (laughs) really kind of atypical to the rehabilitation center directors that they quote here in the United States who would like to see every substance under the sun be illegal so they can have more customers. So I'll read you some of the responses uh, that I saw on social media from French citizens. Um, These are all logical responses to an illogical law. And we know anytime the government seemingly does something wild and wacky and stupid, it's because there's a money trail behind it. But anyway... um, I'll read you some responses. Here's some responses to the ANSM tweet announcing a Kratom ban. And I ran these through Google Translate. These are all Twitter responses from French citizens, I assume. They're all in in French. Uh, The one guy says, When there are economic interests, public health dies. I like that quote. That's a good one. Uh, Another guy says, In short, you are still stupid and unscientific. (laughs) That was a good one. And here's another good one. There is a great hypocrisy in this story on the part of the French administration. How many deaths because of drugs in France? How many deaths due to smoking, alcoholism, not to mention the harms of junk food? So they're saying a lot of the same stuff we say. If you're banning it because it killed somebody, uh, then why is all this stuff legal? Uh, Other people were saying, you know, it'll be mixed with fentanyl if you sell it on the street. Just all logical things that we say to the FDA. And there's also a good discussion on the subreddit R. Kratom. Um, a couple of French citizens were talking about uh, the policies in France, and and uh, they're pretty pissed off about it. So I reached out to them, and hopefully um, I can interview them. We'll get a little more insight, maybe throw up an article this week on kratomscience.com on the blog. 
uh, we did hear from some folks this week who messaged us, and they are um, starting in the they're in the early stages of planning uh, possible uh, kratom association in Europe, It'd be like the American Kratom Association here, for um, you know efforts to keep kratom legal in the countries where it is, and over time overturn the laws where in the countries where kratom is illegal. Um, but if you want to find out more about Kratom in Europe, um, check out our sister site, KratomScience.eu. Uh, we're still developing the site, but there is a significant amount of information up there already. So, State Senator Charles Younger, Chuck Younger, in Mississippi, announced his intention to draft a bill to add Kratom to the list of Schedule One substances there again. He tried this in 2018, but it failed um, because uh, some conscientious representatives did listen to their constituents. He's from Lowndes County, where the Lowndes County Crime and Addiction Task Force is from. That's the law enforcement group that's trying to turn a significant portion of the state into criminals by banning Kratom. Uh, Younger has voted to allow dark money and campaign contributions, so he could be getting money from anywhere. Um, His son was arrested for possession of drugs, and the charges were dismissed um, years ago. And Younger said about his failed 2018 bill that some senators got calls from people saying it was great for pain relief. That's bull. It's just another way to get high, in my opinion. Well, what what fucking business is it of yours, you dipshit? And again, you can see that uh, prohibition bills are not logical. And they don't come with logic. And the, and the people trying to pass them don't use logic to explain it. They just want to turn people into criminals so they can control them. And it's very apparent in Mississippi, and we should all pay attention to what's going on there. But you can contact Chuck Younger and tell him to keep Kratom legal. His phone number is 601-359-3246. That's 601-359-3246. And his email address is cyounger at senate.ms.gov. That's cyounger at senate.ms.gov. And remember to be polite and tell him to keep Kratom legal. Don't call him a dipshit like I just did. But seriously, it's uh, politeness goes a long way when they're actually reading letters and and taking phone calls. So, for, Especially from people that aren't uh, businessmen that want to give them money so they'll pass... Kratom ban laws. And now for another fast-breaking news story. There were two stories about Kratom in the media that caught my attention. The first story comes out of Fox 17 in Nashville. It focuses on the vast majority of Kratom consumers who say that Kratom helps them in some way. And in case anybody out there in the media needs any more sources, we have thousands of comments on KratomScience.com. And under a lot of our articles. So just pick one. There are thousands. Um, And maybe you can balance it out a little more. But Fox 17 Nashville did a good job of that. They had a nice balanced report there. Here's a little clip. Now, while this drug is still somewhat controversial, those who have experienced opioid addiction tell us they swear by it as a safe alternative. Fox 17 News' Kathleen Jacob is in studio with a story. Yeah, so first of all, this drug is not FDA approved yet, similar to CBD and other holistic treatments, but it is legal in Tennessee. I talked to a man who used to take excessive amounts of opioids to manage his pain. Then he discovered Kratom. Now he's made it his life's work to spread the word. They're super green. John Follin has it down to a routine. He takes Kratom daily to manage pain from degenerative disc disease, rheumatoid arthritis, and a number of other health issues. I was consuming uh, large amounts of hydrocodone or oxycontin, and uh, I just wasn't doing the trick. That's when someone brought up the idea of Kratom to him, or mitragyna speciosa. And it was pretty excellent, And and it says the FDA doesn't put their seal of approval on it yet, which that's balanced reporting right there. Um, the, the, this is what we've been trying to do. It's what I've been trying to do since I've been hired at Kratom Science is just let people tell their stories. Because we, when I got hired on, I didn't know much about Kratom. I heard about it. But um, I got hired on because I'm a writer. And I just looked at all the comments on KratomScience.com and the overwhelmingly positive comments. 
Now, another story from NPR, and I think somebody said it was carried on Morning Edition. So uh, the way NPR works, it's produced by, um, all the stories are produced by local stations, and then some of them get picked up nationally. So I think this one was picked up nationally, so we're going to have to respond to this because this is what people are hearing about Kratom. The NPR story follows a model that we've seen before in media. Um, It presents itself as a fair and balanced story, but it's really kind of out of whack with reality given that the vast majority of Kratom consumers had positive experiences. But when someone in power wants something that the vast majority of people don't want, they get a 50% say in the media. The FDA wants Kratom banned, therefore we have to have a balanced story about one person who had a positive experience and one person who died. Um, So the story is literally, literally called The Kratom Debate, Helpful Herb or Dangerous Drug. And this was produced by KQED out of San Francisco. Um, They're one of the better NPR stations. And I'm not knocking NPR. I wish I could do what they do. Um, I don't have a problem with the soldiers, but I have a problem with the fucking war. I'll tell you that. And here's a clip. All right, we know that opioids like morphine and heroin are very dangerous. But in some parts of this country, you can buy a supplement that acts like an opioid out of a vending machine. Okay, that's the intro already. You can buy heroin out of a vending machine. That's pretty much what they're saying. Have, have, have any of you out there ever seen Kratom being sold in a vending machine? I mean, for gosh sakes, a kid could get some. That's that's the whole tone. That's That sets the tone. All right, let's continue. It's an herbal product from Asia called Kratom. Leslie McClurg of KQED wondered whether it's a helpful herb or a dangerous drug. So right at this point, they talk to a uh, shop owner that sells Kratom in her shop. Uh, she said it's uh, completely relieved her anxiety and she had a positive experience. And they bo- they devote like a minute, minute and a half on that. And then they go into this story. But there's a dark side. In 2016, the Drug Enforcement Administration threatened to ban Kratom. It's currently listed as a drug of concern. The Food and Drug Administration has recalled dozens of products tainted with salmonella and warns consumers not to use it because of the risk of addiction and people can overdose. Mateo Martinez is still mourning the loss of his brother. On painkillers after his dentist pulled his wisdom teeth. He was using them in a way that wasn't just for treating pain. Eventually, Marco wanted to kick his addiction. Testimonials on YouTube promised Kratom was his way out. I'm not using narcotics anymore. You know, I have a job. I'm part of my daughter's life again. I'm so grateful for Kratom. It was ugh, life changing. Soon, Marco was taking Kratom multiple times a day. Then the 19-year-old landed in the emergency room over and over. Hyperventilating, breathing, like, like. <gasps> Doctors were unable to explain these episodes. His body wasn't fully processing all of the Kratom or its byproducts, and it built up until he stopped breathing. The toxicology report showed high levels of the psychoactive ingredient in Kratom, and it was listed on his death certificate. That they attributed was the cause of death. In a recent 18-month period, the Centers for Disease Control reported 90 Kratom overdoses, although most of these deaths involved a combination of substances. So if we're going to take a scientific approach, we should take this into consideration that this kid possibly reached the LD50 of kratom in human beings, of mitragyny in human beings, and it was toxic to a system. I've never heard of anybody hyperventilating from taking too much kratom. People can overdose on water. They can drink enough water that makes it toxic. So we could we should consider that. However... We should also consider that toxicology reports can't be relied upon as evidence in a lot of cases, especially with Kratom, because the research just isn't there. If you take the LD50 of mice and say it's the same for humans, we haven't haven't really found out what it is for humans, well, you'd have to eat a whole pound of pure leaf Kratom in one sitting. That's just not going to happen. Maybe this kid got some kind of concentrated dose of mitragynine and took way too much of it. That's possible. 
but we have to look at that study published in the New England Journal of Medicine that took some of these Kratom alone, quote-unquote, deaths, and it turned out there was other drugs in the deceased system that medical examiners don't necessarily have the budget to test for. They can't test, test for everything. So, and they have to put a reason on the death certificate. So if the kid had high amounts of mitragynine in his system, then they put acute mitragynine intoxication. I haven't looked at the medical reports for this this uh, particular case. We could tell, like, if it was just a average heavy dose of Kratom, then that probably wouldn't have caused his death. If he might have been vaping CD, CBD at the time, we've had some issues with vape pens causing issues similar to the ones in this story. Basically, somebody who's not familiar with Kratom is going to come away with um, the impression that you can buy Kratom in a vending machine and it's exactly like heroin and it can kill you. So that's basically what they put out there with uh, the information they had available to them. But it went on to say there's not enough research either way. And it's true that we we need to have um, human clinical trials. Everybody says this on either side of the debate. Um, and all of us who use Kratom should really be careful what we put into our, our bodies. Uh, most of us have come to Kratom because we were careful in the first place. But it's uh, we, we have to worry about what it does in the liver. There's studies that suggest that it um, keeps other drugs from metabolizing, which is why some people say they get a lot drunker. Uh, when they use Kratom. Um, I personally don't drink on the days where I use Kratom. Um, and I would suggest for anybody that want, wants to transition from one drug like alcohol or opiates, which are both hard drugs, to Kratom, to stop using that drug first. Give your liver a rest. Try to be sober for 30 days if you can. And then introduce Kratom. It'll be safer. Um, and stop eating so much sugar, because fructose is just as bad as alcohol on your uh, on your liver. So, and go get regular blood tests. That's that's what I would tell anybody, especially if you're over forty like me. So we got a lot of good stuff planned for the podcast for 2020. I'm gonna have Josh, the founder of kratomscience.com, on here, uh, and that's gonna be the heavy science part. In case anybody was wondering where it was, I'm also going to have a lot more activists, which is not which is my lane. <laughs> and um, But hopefully we have a lot more scientists. If anybody's out there studying Kratom or you work in a lab that studies Kratom, well, I'd love to hear from you. We, we Come on here and educate us about, about the science. That's what it's all about. And we want to hear from just regular Kratom users, too. So if you want to be a guest... Hit me up, gallagher.liberty at gmail.com is my personal email address. See us on Twitter, at Kratom Science. We're also on Facebook. Uh, For more information on all things Kratom, see kratomscience.com. The music is by Risey. And we'll see you next week. Take care.